Hello, everybody. Andrew here from the Legend of Zelda Hub, and back with this week's podcast. In the last week, we've gotten a couple things that's gotten announced from Nintendo as far as Legend of Zelda comes uh, comes and goes. Uh, our first one is the Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, sales exceeding far expectation in Japan and in the United States. Could we see a second Hyrule Warriors game, a, a true sequel? Uh, time will tell. Let, let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see a new Hyrule Warriors game and what kind of feature, new features and new characters you would like to see added. Uh, in our second little news bit, not much this week, but uh, Nintendo did randomly decide, for whatever reason Nintendo does, that they were going to drop a, an original Legend of Zelda game on us, but remade. Uh, well, not really remade, but it kind of had stuff added to it. Kind of an easy mode. I believe they're calling it Quality of Life Edition. If you've got the Nintendo Online features, you can now play the original Legend of Zelda with a little extra starting off your game. I believe you get the white sword, the blue tunic, your coins are filled, I believe you have bombs, and a couple other things to kind of give you a little nudge in the direction of where you need to go in the beginning. Legend of Zelda original is a pretty hard game for people who may be new to gaming or to young players. So this is a very interesting idea from Nintendo with some of these older NES games being really hard. It's very interesting to see what else may get the quality of life treatment as time goes on. Uh, what other NES games would you guys like to see get this treatment and do you think this is a good idea? Or is this a, just another case of Nintendo holding our hands a little too much? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section of the video. <clears throat> Today, though, we have a special guest with us. As you know, the last couple podcasts, we've had a couple of the uh, voice actors from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Our first guest was Patricia Somerset, Princess Zelda herself. And then last week, we had the lovely and talented Elizabeth Maxwell, the voice of Urbosa and Riju. This week, we continue this tr uh, weekly tradition of voice actors on our podcast here today. Let me welcome Joe Hernandez. Joe Hernandez, say hello to our loyal fans. Hello, hello. And who are you, Joe Hernandez? Uh, you can hear me as the voice of Daruk as well as the voice of Yanobo in Breath of the Wild. And for those of you who may not have played Breath of the Wild yet, you, well, excuse me, Breath of the Wild yet, <laughs> Daruk and Yanobo are the Goron characters. Uh, they're, they're the, the, Daruk is the champion, and Yanobo is the descendant. Um, Joe, uh, tell us how it was that you came into contact with the people from Nintendo. Well, uh, the casting director sent out a, a you know a casting audition and all that, uh, and a gentleman by the name of Jamie Mortolaro, who has directed many 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 video games before. Um, gosh, I you know not on top of doing Zelda, he's also done like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. He's done like some of the Final Fantasy games. Um, so he he's got a great pedigree for doing you know a lot of AAA games especially with that cinematic quality about it and uh he sent it out and originally they had kind of scrubbed the script so i didn't know i was auditioning for zelda you know they they you know they have all these different code words and all that and, and a, a lot of games do that especially like the big name ones or from the bigger companies is because they don't want leaks to get out they don't want information to get out and so all I know is I'm auditioning for these characters and they want kind of like a British or kind of like a standard American dialect and that it's, it's a somewhat kind of medieval game. And that's, that's really about it. At one point, I think the production company got out. So it was, I found out that it was for Nintendo. So going off of that information, I'm thinking maybe it's fire emblem or something like that. Um, and, and again, you know, I'm looking at the script when I go into audition, uh, which, you know, in itself is a very unique process because I would say nine times out of ten when you audition for video games, you're doing it from your own little studio at home that you have. 
Uh, rare is the day where they call you in and you go to the studio to go work with the casting director and you, you know, you kind of do the process, you know, one by one and everybody goes in. So that should right there can kind of tip you off that, okay, this is something unique. This is something a little bit special that's different from some of the others. Um, and again, you know, I'm looking at this script and I'm not seeing anything that pertains to Hyrule, nothing about Ganon, nothing about Princess Zelda. It's very general, you know, very, very broad, you know, okay, this is the forest. These are the woods, uh, you know, the mountains and, you know, you know, those types of things, uh, as an actor, you look for those types of things to kind of tip you off so that you know what world or what franchise that you're living in. And, and Jamie and to Nintendo's credit, um, they made sure that there was nothing that was going to give away their, their little secret. And you mentioned, you know, something, a key word that you mentioned is special. And this was really special, especially for Zelda fans, because, you know, for 30 some years, we had grown accustomed to be, uh, grown accustomed to Zelda be, being presented to all of us in a certain kind of way. Yeah. I mean, you would definitely get, you know, obviously the, there was the text, you know, whenever you talk to certain characters and all that. And, you know, they had kind of like dipped their toe in the pool, so to speak, with later installments. If you remember, like, say, Wind Waker, uh, you know, you would have some characters that would be just, you know, hey, uh, you know, they're, you know, just these yeah. little kind of sounds, but no actual real dialogue. You'd get some some laughs here or some yeah. chuckles here, or, you know, hey, listen, you know. So that's that's about as far as as it would go. And, you know, the video game industry has changed so much just in the past 20 years. I mean, you think about where we were at with the N64 to where we're at now. And these games are now so much more cinematic. Um, yeah, I believe the first time and you can chalk this up to being a Zelda game or not a Zelda game. It's all how you interpret it. But the first time that uh, we got any kind of dialogue uh, that wasn't just playing a text box was Hyrule Warriors. I, I mean, that was just a narrator, though. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. here comes Breath of the Wild, and, you know, we got that trailer dropped on us, that that first, like, really big trailer where, where they revealed so much, and then all of a sudden you hear Zelda's voice, and it's like, oh, whoa, that's huge. And and, mm -hmm. and it was, a, at, at first, a little bit of deci uh, divisiveness in the community, like, some were like, oh, finally, now we can, you know, give some of these characters a little life. And then the other people were like, no, 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 no change. Change is not good. And, you know, when I you think I, stuff like that, you're kind of going to get that sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you know, change is always, you know, scary for some people. And I, I get that. And I feel like Nintendo tried to kind of split the difference to, to sort of please both crowds. Because if you notice, it wasn't too, too heavy on dialogue. Um, but you know, there, there was still some of that old school kind of, you know, text and, you know, uh, about it in the game. So I, and, and again, just in general, when it comes to their characters and their properties, uh, Nintendo is very protective of, of what they put out there and they're very, very conscious yeah. of, of how they do it. And, and, you know, what I was kind of saying earlier is like the video game industry has changed so much in the past 20 years where, you know, everything is more and more cinematic. Everything's more real life, you know, uh, grounded in realism. And, and, you know, it's these the budgets for some of these games and the production level is on par with Hollywood movies, if not even greater, I would say, to a certain effect. And there's such a care for the character and the dialogue and the way that things are written. Um, and so everybody else is kind of taking that next step. And, and, you know, really, really honoring the voice acting in a lot of these major franchises. And again, you know, like I said, this was sort of Nintendo's way of sort of dipping their toe in the pool. They didn't dive head first, I would say. Right. Um, but again, they just wanted to kind of test the waters and see how it would how it would work out. Now, you mentioned, that, you know, we all everybody who's ever followed Nintendo knows how secretive they can be. And how oh, yeah. very well protective over their IP they can be. Oh, and yeah. Understandably so. In this day and age, you know, it's a very, very competitive scene in the video game industry. And one little leak can ruin anything. Absolutely. Uh, so you get, you get, you do this audition, you send in your, your, your voice clips, with, you know, reading this dialogue. And then you come back later on 
and you get the part, and you find out this is Zelda. How was your reaction to finding that out? Just, just blown away, man. Just, just blown away. Like, could not believe it. And, and you know, I should, I should probably back up a little bit and say uh, this was all during like 2016. So I think I, I originally auditioned for this quote unquote mystery game back in like March of 2016. And I was told, Oh yeah, you got it. You're great. We love you. You know, all that other stuff. And you know, they bring you back for a second round of callbacks and you know, okay, you're, you're cast. Right. And you just don't hear anything. And, and that's a little unusual in the video game business. Like, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll do the audition or you'll do the callback and then, you know, a week, two weeks, maybe even as far as like a month later, but we didn't actually get starting to record, I would say, until September of that year. And so that's a long kind of a layover. And uh, from what I was told is that, you know, it went all the way up to, to you know, some of the creative heads up over at Nintendo. And they, you know, they wanted to make sure that they listened and signed off on everybody and, you know, made sure that everything was up to their their standards and all that. And, and understandably so. Uh, but you know, when you don't hear from somebody, you know, for four months, you know, at least in the voice acting world, it's like, okay, well, you know, I, maybe I didn't get it or maybe they changed their mind or maybe, you know, who knows, you know, who, maybe this game got scrapped, you know, not knowing, you know, what it, what obviously would end up to be. Um, but yeah, we started recording, I want to say like August or September of, of 2016, and day one, you know, you, you kind of hear some some hints, sort of some whispers of, you know, what it might be or what it might be. But again, nobody is officially telling you. And I get in day one and Jamie right there, the director says, yeah, it's Zelda. And it's just it's it's surreal. It's like winning the lottery, man. Wow. I, I, I can't really describe that that feeling because, you know, I'm a fan of the series. I grew up playing you know, link to the past. I grew up playing Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker and, you know, uh, Spirit Tracks. And it was just, it was so freaking surreal. That's, that's simply amazing. I could just, I could just feel the goosebumps through you. Just, yeah. You know, telling and that there, story. There were moments where, you know, after a session, I would just go back to my car and I would just have a moment where you just kind of sit there and it's like, what is happening right now? This isn't real. Like somebody pinch me. This, this cannot be what I'm doing. So as we all know, March, 2017, I cannot believe it's been over a year. Um, the breath of the wild drops worldwide with the release of the Nintendo switch. It's multi-console. It's both on the switch and the Wii U. How quick are you, to go out to the store and grab a switch as quick as you can, grab that game, get it home, and hear yourself in the finished product. Okay, so I was there at midnight, like, what is it, you know, like the, the night before everything dropped. You know, I was at Best Buy in line with my stuff. Now, uh, I was getting the Wii U version. Okay. I, I, I did not get the Switch. Uh, I, I'm rocking the Wii U version because I'm kind of old school that way. Um, with with new consoles, not that I hate have anything against them, but I usually wait until like the second generation to to get them. So it's like you know all the bugs and all the kinks are kind of kicked out and all that stuff. Right. Uh, but I was I was there with my Wii U console and I got my Amiibos and you know I I loaded up, man. So I was I was right there in line with with everybody else. That's amazing. I, I actually, uh, I did the smart thing when they did the whole uh, Switch announcement thing, that whole stage presentation, like the, it was like three or four months before that. I think it was like in December of 2016. Mm -hmm. I immediately like stayed up to midnight, just refreshing like there a million go. times. And I got that stuff pre-ordered. I think I did it through GameStop. Did you get that master copy? I did. Oh, okay. Cause that, I, you know, man, I looked at that and I was like, man, I would totally be all about that. And those went up so fast. Those were, those were gone. It's kind of funny that I got the, um, my friend actually helped me get it. It was, it was a kind of a late Christmas, early birthday type present. And she, uh, she got me that, uh, the master edition 
And it came with like the sword, the soundtrack. Oh all, yeah. All of the uh, doodads, the coin, and I've yeah. got all that. <laughs> One time I was moving the sword, and I broke it. Oh no! So just like in the game, I broke the master sword. Oh uh, man! In true Princess Zelda fashion, she came through and found another one of those swords and got it replaced for me. Okay. So, so that was, oh man, I, that little mini heart attack that I had. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, I've put a lot of game time into that myself. I've one hundred percent of that whole thing. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I've done all the DLC. Um. And I gotta say, you know, all of the champions and all of the characters in the games that you guys did were really well done. Thank they you. Exceeded my expectation. I, I I will admit I was a little bit skeptical about voice acting going into it. Mm-hmm. And when I finally, my first one I encountered was Mipha, and I'm like, wow, okay. oh, she is so adorable. Like you instantly fall in love with her. And yeah. Then the second one I encountered was Ravali. And I love Rivali. Rivali is my spirit animal. <laughs> he's so he's just such he's such a, a you know what. <laughs> oh yeah. I love oh, yeah. him. Uh, the third one I encountered was Urbosa. Uh, probably my favorite of the four. She is definitely a strong maternal, very and and, and the lady that played her, Elizabeth, we had her on last week. Is an absolute class act. I loved her. Love Elizabeth. She's she's great. And then the last, but not certainly not the least, I encountered Daruk. And mm-hmm. ever since Ocarina of Time, I have absolutely loved the Gorons. Since Same. Darunia, Darmani from Ajora's Mask, you know, we've seen them in Wind Waker, we've seen them in the DS games. Yeah. And then I encountered Daruk, and I'm like, this is the best Goron yet. <laughs> I love it. He's, he captures the spirit of Darunia, the strong but lovable. He's big and strong and tough, but you also want to hug him. Yeah, absolutely. And then you've got his descendant, who's kind of the complete opposite. You still want to hug him, but you also kind of want to kick him in the pants and toughen him up a little. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially after that uh, escort mission that you, you have with them. I've, I've heard a lot of, you know, I love that escort mission, and I've heard a lot of, I hate that escort mission, so... I love you know. it. I like it. I thought it was kind of a cool little thing. He's he's a fun little character. I like I like how he looks. I like his little like scarf thing he wears. Um, when you were recording, what what is your favorite scene uh, of the Daruk scene or the Yanobo scenes for that matter? Oh God. Um, you know, I mean, if we're talking strictly just Breath of the Wild, I would say the moment when when Daruk sees Yanobo. I felt that that was a very, very touching moment. It was and very touching, yes. That that's you know a great, great, just heartfelt moment where you know it's like, oh, I wonder how the the Gorons are doing. What's what's going on here? And you know, it's it's kind of one of those moments where you know we're getting ready for battle, you know, and and you know we're going to have this big fight and all that, and yet Daruk is just kind of taking a moment to kind of appreciate everything he's seeing and and. You know, and then he spots a, a fellow descendant Goron right there. And how do you not love that? I think my favorite, and it might be my favorite cutscene in the entire game, actually comes in the DLC. Yes, and it's the part yeah. with the dog. Yeah, I, I mean, because that's that's why I was asking you. You know, I mean, as far as like you know, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, there's that. Um, but the scenes that we have in um, in the DLC. I'm it, it was great being able to kind of come back and revisit the character. And, you know, it's, it's funny cause you're, you're coming back all these months afterward, but we're doing kind of like prequel type stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it's, 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 it's that interesting dynamic of, of revisiting this character, but we're revisiting this character very, very early on. So, you know, it's great. And it was just a great moment. Just, you know, you know, he's kicking all this butt and then, you know, he's he's afraid of a dog. And it's it's so <laughs> cute and it's so adorable. I kind of took it like Nintendo kind of saw, okay, people are taking to these characters really well. They're, you know, lots of positive feedback on all four of them. People absolutely adore these four. 
let's do more. And I kind of felt like that's kind of what part of the DLC was, is get out an excuse to, okay, let's let's add more, let's get the, the, the people back in here, and let's build from this. Absolutely. I, I feel like, you know, each and every one of those uh, champions, they, they get their character fleshed out a little bit more. Right. Uh, in the DLC and, and Hey, I'm all for that. You know, you see a different side of Daruk a little bit, obviously, uh, which is nice. And then you have the end of the cut scene and, and, you know, the, the, the ceremony where everybody gets in and takes the picture and all that. And, you know, how do you not just fall in love with it? It's, you know, I told a friend of mine a while, you know, it was a while back, while back when this stuff was still pretty new. I said, but these voice actors, as is right here, with these four characters, you could make an you could make a, like an anime or a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. The characters are that good, and that's something that you know, you know, being you know, I've ran the Legend of Zelda hub for eight years, um, and I get a lot of feedback and I see a lot of opinions from people in the Legend of Zelda fan base, and one of the things that gets brought up quite often over the years is the prospects of some type of animated series. So let's say, you know, tomorrow, Reggie, I'll just use him as an example, <laughs> because we don't know the names of all these people. Uh, Reggie calls Joe Hernandez and says, Joe, oh my goodness. we really liked you as Daruk. We're going to be started, starting a Legend of Zelda animated series, and we want you on board. What do you tell Reggie? Absolutely, a thousand percent. That is awesome. I mean, and, and also I probably ask, like, how the heck did you get my number, Reggie? <laughs> He's Reggie. Reggie knows all. Okay. <laughs> he is the Reginator. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, one of the um, things that, that people from the page like to do is they like to interact with one another. Um, have you been to any of the uh, cons or anything as more than a guest? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we, we had like a kind of a mini breath of the wild reunion for, for the cast, uh, back in, what is it like early July, we got invited to uh, salt Lake gaming con 4th of July weekend. And they brought pretty much all of us out with exception for Sean and Amelia. Uh, but Bill was there, Andy, me, Patricia, Elizabeth, and they brought out, uh, Jamie, uh, who, like I said, is the the director, but also the voice of Prince Sidon. So he's he's kind of a two for one in that one right there. And uh, you know, there's definitely a lot of Sidon love out there. And we did a panel, and like I said, it was it was a little bit of a reunion. And you know, Bill and I are really really good friends. Um, you know, he lives out here in L.A. I'm out here in L.A. And just kind of a quick sidebar. Uh, I then I think it speaks to the strength of the NDA, you know, again, hush, hush, secret, secret. Um, I was working on it. He was working on it. We both didn't know that we were in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill, who's the voice of, of King Hyrule. Again, I never saw him at the studio. You know, you're kind of just recording, you know, one at a time, one at a time and all that stuff. And then probably about three days before the game came out, uh, Jamie sent us on all, all an email, you know, and it was just, Hey guys, you know, proud of your work. You know, this is, we're ready. It's coming out. This is happening. Um, you know, looking forward, excited for everything. And I, I happen to see his name on the email chain. And I was like, wait a second, you know, I know Bill and, you know, and, and again, you know, you're in this, I'm, in, you know, it, it was just a total, just totally blown away that, you know, me and one of my, my, you know, dear friends out here in LA, uh, we're working on the same project and we just did not know. But again, you know, it's hush, hush, it's secret. You know, you can't, you can't say anything. And, you know, it was, it was great to work on it with, with him. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I've not spoken with Bill yet. He is on my list of people to contact for future, uh, future interviews. Uh, I would be honored of course, to have him here as I am honored to have you, which brings me to my next question for you. Uh, you know, get past Breath of the Wild a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about what are some other things that you have done in your career. Gosh, um, you know, I've done a lot of like commercials. I've done a lot of uh, anime. Uh, I've done some other video games. I have some other things that I'm working on right now. 
Um, you know, do a lot of children's books. Uh, you know, so if you have any kids, uh, if, if any of you have like the Disney story central app, uh, I do a lot of the ebook and audio narration for a lot of the Disney frozen books. Oh, wow. So that's, awesome. that's, you know, that's something that I do. That's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, right now, uh, one of the things that I have that's out this weekend is a uh, movie, uh, MFKZ, which I don't know if a lot of people know about. It's kind of getting like a very limited theatrical run, but, um, yeah, the film stars like Danny Trejo, Michael Chiklis, uh, Riz is in it. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty cool cast. Um, and it's just, it's awesome, man. It's, it's a beautiful looking film. Uh, we did like a cast screening of it, uh, last night out here in Burbank and it was, uh, it was beautiful to watch and, uh, you know, had a great turnout and everything. So, you know, get a chance to, to watch it. Please do. I see another thing that you've worked on, and some of our fans here are probably, you know, knowing the age ranges of our fans, a little TV series called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yes, yes. JoJo's. Uh, I did that. That was a long, long, long time ago. Um, we were doing, I did some creature voices on it. Uh, there was an episode and I, I forgive me cause I, I not as well versed in the series as many other people. Uh, but, uh, I did these one, like these creatures, they're like these werewolf zombie Nazi guys or whatever. And, you know, it was just a session where we were doing like the creature voices and they're eating people and all this other stuff. And again, I'm sure other people would probably be able to tell you more and more about the specifics of, you know, what episode or what story arc it was and all that stuff. But I can tell you doing the, the, the creature voices on that, that just shredded my voice, man. Uh, we recorded that on a Friday and I pretty much needed the entire weekend to recover um, just because of like how brutal it was on my, my throat. Oh yeah, some you know I, I do uh, video let's plays on YouTube, kind of as a side thing for all of the people in the Zelda. But I like to make walkthroughs, and a lot of times I like to do voices myself. I'm I wouldn't consider myself a voice actor by any means, but it's always something I've really been into. Mm -hmm. And whenever I encounter a Goron, I'm like just in my mind thinking. Oh boy, here I go. I got to do a deep voice. It's going to pass the jug of water, someone, please. <laughs> well, know. and, and kind of going back to how secretive everything was, you know, when I went into audition, you know, the character's name wasn't Daruk. Right. You know, what they had on the script, you know, again, mind you, everything was kind of scrubbed, was uh, I believe his name was Hannibal. Oh, wow. And the way that, that, you know, they sort of described this character to me <clears throat> was that he was like this kind of like big burly character. And I kind of, I, I think Jamie used the word like uh, Gimli from um, Lord of the Rings. Oh, I can definitely see that. So just that sort of big, bolsterous, over the top, larger than life kind of a character. But again, I had no idea that we're, we're ending up at, with a Goron. I was thinking, you know, kind of like this barbarian you know, big battle axe and all that. And so that was sort of the picture that I had in my mind when I was doing the initial auditions and the callbacks and all that stuff. And then lo and behold, it ends up being a Goron and the Goron champion. And, you know, a, that, you know, had I known that it was a Goron, I probably might've done some things differently. Uh, but I, I think it worked out for the best. Well, I can say on behalf of everybody here at the Zelda hub, including, you know, my 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 employees and you know all the fans that come to the uh, to it's talk to us on social media youtube etc i don't think you have anything to look down on i think you did a great job <laughs> well thank uh, you it's it's a it's a very memorable character it did justice to the gorons you know if if there if if anybody wants to check out Breath of the Wild, and you haven't already, if you're one of the, like, eight people left <laughs> uh, who hasn't played this game, please, by all means, go to GameStop, get on Amazon, go to Walmart, Target, what eBay, you know, if you yeah. can't afford a, a brand-new copy, go get a used copy. Play this game. You deserve to play this game. Now, you mentioned you'd played some of the older Zeldas 
What got you into Zelda? Um, gosh, I I just I loved it. I, you know, uh, I think if we're gonna be completely honest, I think the 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 main theme, you know, you know, you know, and and you know that right there just kind of draws you in when you're a kid playing it. Right. And, you know, I remember playing the first one on the, the NES. I didn't actually have my own cartridge. Uh, I, I had to go to my cousin's house to play it. Okay. Like, I, I think for, like, the first couple of games um, through the N64, like, I didn't actually have those games because, you know, my family, we we didn't have a lot of money. So, right. um, you know, I would go to my friend's house and he had a link to the past. So I would go over and play it and all that. And, you know, not that. I was able to like play it start to finish, but you kind of got a sense of it and you fell in love with the series and you fell in love with, with everything about it. And then finally, you know, N64 comes out, you know, Ocarina of Time. I was like, that was the game for me. And I, and I know it's the game that was the game for everybody. Right. You know, that, uh, you know, even to this day, a lot of people go back and say, that's my favorite Zelda game. And for me, it's kind of a toss up between that and Wind Waker. Oh, Wind Waker fan. I'm um, glad when I find one of those. I loved, love, love, love Wind Waker. Same. I mean, it's just the the sort of like open worldness yeah. of it, you know, and being able to sail across and and you know the the animation was just so beautiful. You know, it how could so you funny. not love it? It's so funny that we talk about Wind Waker in the way we do now because I feel the same way. It's until Breath of the Wild came out was my favorite Zelda game of all time, but when Wind Waker first came out, it was very heavily criticized by fans everywhere because we because of seen, Toon Link. Yeah, because we'd seen like a year or two before release, there was this tech demo that was that was shown of a, of a more realistic, darker, grittier. It was like this battle that they had between Link and Ganondorf, and it was more like a Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask type graphics, just a little more updated for the GameCube, of course. And that's what everybody was expecting. And then all of a sudden, E3 that year pops up, and then here's here's Toon Link. And everybody's yeah. like, whoa, no, this isn't what we want. But, uh, you know, as, of course, as time goes on, they say time heals all wounds, and now everybody's like, oh, Wind Waker, that thing's a classic. That's one of the best in the series, and everybody loves yeah. it. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, we would go on to get Twilight Princess, which would be that grittier, darker version that everybody was craving. But honestly, now looking back, while both games are pretty, you know, looked at fondly, it's very easy to see that Wind Waker's just a slight bit probably more popular than the other one just because of what you said. The beautiful animation, the the character models were great. It was the first time Link had, had like, emotion to him, too. Yeah. A lot yeah. of faces... You know, he, 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 if he gets hit, you actually see, like, a pain expression on his face. Yeah, I agree. Well, Joe, I think we have reached our time limit for this, this episode. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to tell? A uh, better question. Is there anything that Daruk would like to tell the fans of The Legend of Zelda Hub? Oh gosh. Uh, just thank you for supporting this Goron, man. You know, appreciate it. You know, um, you know, thank you for, for all the love and, uh, you know, I, all of your love and support, you know, and I, I've gotten a lot of, uh, you know, people that have reached out on Twitter and Instagram and, you know, all that. And, and it's just been uh, super, super supportive. That's awesome, Joe. Uh, stick around for just a minute here. I'm going to go ahead and close out here. Everybody, thanks again for listening. The, on behalf of Joe Hernandez, I am Andrew Dawson from The Legend of Zelda Hub. And everybody, thanks again for watching, and goodbye.